So the Eco Tracker is our fast and accurate radon gas sniffer. It has a five minute sniff mode, a 10 minute sniff mode. Uh, it has a uh, industry leading sensitivity at 30 counts per hour. It supports for continuous radon monitoring. It uses one single mobile app for all four detectors. It has strong technical support and it, and it has the best value on the market. And this is what comes with that value. You get, a, you get four eco trackers, a carrying bag, four power adapters, four extension cables, and four step up cables for the optional battery if you have them. The eco tracker, getting started with the eco tracker is really easy. You can plug it in, wait for it to initialize, and once it's ready, you're, you just download our eco tracker, which is free and it comes with, with uh, which is free and it comes with the, with the package, uh, and you're ready to go. Uh, this is what the mobile app kind of looks like as soon as you open it up and you set up your your eco trackers. On the left hand side, we have we have it in Pico Curies, and on the right side, we have it in Becquerel's. Uh, as you can see, you can see all four detectors lined up at once with, with the with the levels and also color um, color coordination based on whether no action is required, whether you should consider fixing your home, or or if you we recommend fixing your home. Once you click on one of these um, one of these eco trackers, this that's what it would look like here at the bottom right. Um, the mobile app supports sniff and CRM mode, right? So if you click on settings, here you have uh, the serial number, right? Then you have the option to choose between the five minute and a, and a 10 minute hot spot sniff mode. The next thing is there's a button to switch from uh, sniff mode to continuous rate uh, monitoring. Then there is a erase all data button a place where you can where you can change the the, the unit setting uh, an alarm setting for if you know if if you get to a certain point and you want to make make sure that uh, that you know exactly when it hits that point and then uh, the fir the firmware version once you once you click on once you change modes you'll get one of this pop up and as you can see you do need to either reset your, um, your data or save and then reset. If you decide to save your log data, you can go ahead and give it a name and, and it'll save and then it'll go into the next, uh, into whatever mode that you decide. So Jesse, I know you have um, some experience with this. I would love to hear uh, more from you regarding this. Yeah, so recently, instead of going in and erasing everything every time, because you got to do it on every device. So I've recently just, John and I will plug them in when we get to a job. We leave them in continuous monitoring mode. And then I'll be able to see on like the graph when I click on that. And I can just kind of see like, hey, all this data over here is from previous jobs. And this is this job. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, uh, like in the video that we just posted an hour ago um, that we we're looking for a hot spot. And I believe we switched them all to five minute mode and Chuck could probably clarify if we did that, but I'm pretty sure we switched to five minute interval, the hot sniff and then cleared all the data. So we can get faster updates, but I usually like to leave it in continuous monitoring mode just because it's one hour data points instead of a bajillion five minute data points and I'm not good at math. So I'm not, not like five, 10, 15, 20, 10. okay, that was an hour ago. Yeah. So uh, usually I find myself leaving it in continuous monitoring mode. I see, okay. Yeah. Right. So do, do you have any other stories or real life uh, scenarios of, of you using this, uh, the eco tracker, maybe <laughs> like a funny story or something, so, something like that? Um, well, I know I talked about my cousin Mike's house last time, and that's the video that you guys sent out. Um, I'm not sure if we had done the wrap up at that point when we talked last, um, but that video, we kind of wrapped things up and I had just left those run for a couple weeks because I couldn't get back there to film it until then. Normally we wouldn't leave in the customer's house. We usually have a pretty good idea of what the radon levels are when we're wrapping up. 
Um, but in the video that we just posted today, uh, that was for that hands-on radon training course. And that might be an actual better story to tell um, because the eco tracker really kind of saved, our, <laughs> saved us there. Um, so we had, we were going for optimal mitigation because that's what the name of the course was. So we had three different suction points um, around that basement. And we've done a couple of videos on that already. So maybe if you've seen those, it might draw, tie the story together. But um, the garage slab, there's attached garage. They had a cantilever over the garage or over the garage from the house, like the kitchen bumped out of like a foot and a half. And under that, there was no concrete. It's just dirt and then like the rim joist was next to that. So on day three, we came back for this course and Charlie had pulled up the app and he's like, hey, the radon levels are, you know, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2 and 1.1 1 .1 or something. And I was like, oh man. And he's like, what do you mean, oh man? I'm like, oh, we, like we could get it better than that. Like, where's it coming from? We had full pressure field extension in the basement. Uh, so all of us were kind of scratching our heads. We're looking for like other entry points, you know, hey, is there, does the plumbing come through the block wall or utilities or anything like that? And there, it wasn't any of that stuff. Um, and we we're all like thinking like, it's gotta be that cantilever because there's no insulation, it's just cold air dumping down from the garage and, you know, open soil on the other side, like a, I don't know, 10 by two foot chunk of open soil under that cantilever. But our eco trackers, Show, we're showing that it's low there. So it's like, well, I don't really want to just throw a suction point for the heck of it and see if it works. The garage was low. Everywhere else in the basement was, you know, nothing remarkably high. And um, I remember in that radon class, they were talking, my entry level class, Jack Bartholomew was talking about spiders build their webs where there's airflow. So we put the eco tracker up where there was spider webs by the front step. And we saw it, you know, quite, kind of quickly rise to like three over a half hour or so. So that front step, that adjacent slab, thanks to Chad and Bruce's case study on that and Bill Broadhead, um, I remembered that and like, oh, that front step is our culprit. So we dropped a suction point in there and the rate on levels, you know, dropped to, you know, 0.3 to 0.6 when we came back after lunch. So that's kind of how we used it to track that down and. Had we not had that, you know, trying to set up a CRM somewhere and wait and wait and wait, you know, it might have drugged that job out a lot longer. It wasn't a, a half hour later, we're pretty confident, like, hey, it's the front step. You know, with CRM, you got one data point every hour, and the first four hours aren't that accurate anyways, for some monitors anyways. So that's, that's the most recent story where it's really kind of saved us. So... Yeah, that's awesome. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. So then, would you say would you say that the eco tracker really helped you out? Like, just you know. Yeah, I think Charlie Charlie Gutridge is going to be watching this later. But and I was just watching the <clears throat> that video before Daniel posted it for edits, and Charlie at the end is like, "Eco tracker is like they're a game changer." <laughs> so <he's> like that <laughs> is the title. But uh, so yeah, that I mean that yeah. Somebody grab that headline. Eco trackers, they're a game changer. That's, 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 that's copyright by Charlie already. Copyright by Charlie. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask for that. Yeah. Okay, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on to some of the questions that we got from last um, from the last webinar. Um, here, the, the question is: Where would you recommend setting these up for testing? Floor, stand, counter. What, what are the limitations and what do I do if I get high levels? Will it damage the unit or will I just need to reset for a couple of days? So um, it, it, we do recommend setting the eco tracker around 20 inches from the floor and 20 inches from the wall. Um, the eco tracker's ra radius is about a thousand square feet. Uh, the device will not be damaged if it is exposed to high levels of radon. Um, but if it's, it's been exposed to, th to more than 30 uh, picocuries for more than 30 minutes, you, you're going to have to ventilate for at least an hour. And so that's, that's the answer to that question. Hey, David, I think, didn't somebody say you want to leave it plugged in too? Like if it's outside, you want to leave yes. it plugged in outside? That's right. So you want, to you want to leave it running for about an hour outside in a well-ventilated well area. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, Jesse, do you have any any more input on this? Like any any more insight on where to put these uh, these devices for max maximum? Uh... Yeah. So I'm not using them like the EPA protocol. I'm putting them wherever I want to know. So I like I'm very curious. Yeah. And like you would never test in a sump basket or you know under a sump cover or whatever. But I had one and I propped them up around the basement. And I think I told the story last time. But you know I might set them by a sump basket and like. Well, we call it 75 there let's pull it out of there but i'm just curious like that so like i don't really care about the protocol protocols because it's not an official test so like my cousin mike's house you might not normally test in a well room um but it showed us like hey we got to fix this and fixing that fixed the whole rest of the house so i think the protocols can kind of i mean yeah they're good but this is an official test, so like I'm going to throw it in a crawl space and stuff because I want to know if that crawl space is hot. Yeah, this these these are just recommendations, of course, right? Um, the there is one thing though that I think is like if you're going to put them straight on the ground, be very careful because I think um, dirt does damage them. So just uh, you know, just be careful that when 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 you do things like that. Well, one thing as far as damage. I was uh, kind of nerding out on my sister's house and the floor trap was uh, open. Like the, the little plug wasn't in there. And I was like, I, I wonder if there's like radon as a source from the sewer. So I set up my radon eye pro on that and uh, I had plugged that or something. Anyways, the basement flooded and I went in there and the, the radon eye pro was under like half underwater. So I threw it in rice, of course, like anybody would do. And then I sent it to Bowser Morning for calibration and it was still good. That's awesome. Yeah. So I was surprised. I thought I fried it. There you go, folks. Yep. It was still <laughs> plugged in. I think it was still on, if I remember right, but just half underwater. Awesome. Well, shows to see how how well made they are, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the vulnerable, vulnerable bits weren't underwater. That's probably it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, here's another question that we get quite a lot. <laughs> We, we we get this question so repeatedly that it, it's it honestly should be the the first um, question on, on here, right? Uh, what are the key differences between the Eco Tracker, the Radon Eye, and the Radon Eye Pro? So basically, the Eco Tracker is four devices that appear on one app. It has a five and a ten minute sniff mode. It supports CRM capabilities and are Bluetooth enabled. The Radon Eye is Bluetooth enabled and has an app to see data and support CRM. CRM. Um, the Radon Eye Pro is NRPP and NRSB certified, uh, Bluetooth and Wi Fi enabled, and can generate reports and has a robust app and dashboard to view real time data. So each of these has their, has their um, you know, functions, and we see that a lot of our Mitigators really love to use the eco tracker, just you know, just because of the sniffing capabilities and and the simultaneous uh, detection. Um, Radon Eye is more so like a, a consumer product, but a lot of our mitigators also use it. Um, and then the Radon Eye Pro is our certified device. That is, you know, if you need to do a certified test, this is the device that you want to get, and that um, you know, in order to be able to to have a certified result, right? So then here we have a few more questions, right? Uh, does it give a report or does it just give you numbers? The eco tracker just gives you data points at this point. Uh, it doesn't give you a report. For a report, again, you would want the uh, Radon Eye Pro. Um, does the eco tracker have a time and date stamp? Uh, no, the eco tracker only shows data in uh, five minute uh, you know, data point intervals. Does it require calibration? No, it doesn't. Uh, because it's not certified, it doesn't require calibration. And then another very, uh, very frequent question of ours is, uh, does it, you know, does it have a battery? It doesn't have an internal battery, but you can use a 20,000 mAh battery pack, which will power it for about 60 hours, and a 32,000 mAh battery pack, which will power it for 76 hours. Um, So uh, af after this webinar, you guys will have an uh, opportunity to, you know, to ask more more questions via survey, some or 
or anything like that. So if you if you have a minute, please let us know how we how we did, um, what we could do better, what you guys would like to see, and we would definitely appreciate your feedback. So this at this moment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the floor for everybody to really, if anyone has any questions, uh, comments, you know, or anything like that, definitely this is the time to to ask away. And I'll also be looking at the chat to see if we need any. I think you have one question in the chat and yeah. to get an icebreaker question too is if you have the eco trackers and you don't use them or you thought of a way to use them that you haven't seen me use them in, I would love to know how you use them or if you found anything that, you know, any tips or tricks um, from all ears. So try yeah. and you know, if you got any suggestions. Yeah, you guys, you guys are more than welcome to chime in at any time, like Jesse said. Um, I agree. I, I think it would be really interesting to hear how, if you, if you do have an eco tracker, what, how do you use it? You know, what are, what are some tips and tricks? So go ahead and, and put it in the chat, open up your mics and, and however you'd like. But to answer the question, uh, how many eco trackers have you sold and what is, what is any feedback that you have received from your users? Um, so it, it's honestly, it's been a really great hit with our, with our mitigators. We've had a, we've had a ton of mitigators uh, nationally just, you know, give us great feedback and, and they've, we've actually have been able to improve the product with uh, the feedback that we've gotten from them. But I mean, our, our mitigators love the fact that, you know, it's sensitive, it's accurate, um, it's easy to use. And our mitigators love the, the fact that you can see it many different spaces at once and it, and for the price it's it's really they they love the value of it there's another question in chat hey it says hi all i purchased weight on i last month it has been averaging around 10. let me pick that for four on a night when we received heavy rain this is an off one so this might this might be a better question for Jesse, but uh, I'll 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 do, give my input. I, from what I've heard, rain does affect the um, rain on fluctuations. I'm not too sure how, but I know that it does. I've 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 heard that it does. But Jesse, maybe you have a little bit more um, more insight on that. Unmute, Jesse. All right, so we see the spikes too when it rains. Um, I'm not sure if it's the water, the heavy rain kind of caps the soil and then it comes up through like the, the basement or the home because it's dry or if it's like the water pushing the radon down where it has to come back up through the house or something. Um, so I'm not an expert on the measurement stuff at all. I kind of nerd out on the mitigation. So that might be a good uh, Chad Robinson or Bruce Need or Josh Kerber question to Bill Broadhead, obviously, you know the answer. So that's my theory, anyways, from what I remember, but I'm no expert on it, on it. So here I'm reading something that says rainier days tend to result in noticeably higher radon levels. This is because rainy days are often coupled with lower barometric pressure. So if you have lower pressure, then the gas is going to be able to come out of the soil a lot easier. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you doing the doing the legwork for us there. <laughs> yeah, I know Josh Kerber. When I got a difficult house or something or some something weird, I can send him the radon report, and he lays it over weather like weather data, and he can see like, oh, when your radon spiked, you know, the bear, the storm came in, and there's a quick drop of barometric pressure, so there is a correlation there. So. There's, there's your answer, I guess. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate the, the question. Um, and we so, also had some questions from the registration form, and I, I'm happy to read a few because I know you guys who registered, you submitted them, yeah? Charlie, who's who couldn't make it <laughs> to this session, he said, can I have more than four eco-truckers at a time? 
Yes, David? you can. Yeah, you can. You can actually. Um, they'll all appear on the same app. So let's say you had eight and you put them around the house. As long as, as long as the uh, the Bluetooth reaches the phone, um, it, you should see them all on 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 one app. I also noticed that someone um, mentioned how they how they use the eco trackers. Um, they said that I use it on every install and it will help narrow down where to place the suction points. It at least gives you a starting point for suction point locations. Which is which is something which is something that I've I've heard a lot from from our mitigated customers that they, they use it to kind of try to triangulate and pinpoint um, where where the radon's coming from. There is another question. Um, I want to know how many counts the unit provides. Stan is asking, does it have power or a lithium battery? How long does it last? Sure. So um, the the counts it, it does it does thirty counts per hour, right? Which is uh, the leading sensitivity in the industry right now. Um, as for power, it is powered by by AC, it's AC powered, um, plug it into the wall and then you can receive power. But the units come with a step up cable, which is, you know, you can connect the two battery packs. Um, I, I mentioned it earlier, 20,000 20, uh, 20, MAH, it'll give you about 60 hours. 32,000 MAH will give you about uh, 76 hours. So um, we don't we don't supply batteries, but we do. There are some batteries that we recommend, and if you'd like, we can definitely um, in, we can share that with you guys. Yeah, looks like we got a question from Eno. Will I ever be able to see the data on on all the data on one screen graphically? Uh, that's that is a great question. And that's something that I'd have to talk uh, about internally, but for the time being, um, it'll it, it's not looking like that for now. Yeah, I I can answer the the questions from the Eno. So so we you know support the four devices, but uh, you know app uh, connect the each devices at all at all time. So we are using the you know BLE broadcasting. So. You can see the you know the initial the latest readings in a one app one screen, but uh, you know graphically, you know one um, you cannot see the you know all the data in the one screen. So you can you need to connect the one device at a one time. And Jamie, maybe you can elaborate too. I know like I wanted like a rolling average, and um, I can't remember his name right now. Um, he also wanted like a an average for it, and I think you just updated that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, recently, you know, update on firmware. So you know, if you guys uh, can uh, download from the you know new app from the app store, you know, or update the app uh, from the app store, then um, you can update a firmware, and then the updating the firmware, including. Um, uh, we are uh, previously we are uh, checking the you know uh, hotspot finding each you know five minute or ten minute, but uh, with a new form error, uh, we changing the you know cal uh, way of uh, calculating so we can show uh, average of last thirty minutes. So you can you can see the last uh, you know, average of last thirty minutes on uh, you know five minute snipping mode or you know ten minute snipping mode. So Jamie, follow up question on that. Mm. When I'm looking at the app on my phone and I yeah. have like all four devices listed before I click on any of those, is yeah. that the like that rolling average there, or is that what it is currently right now? Yes. Yeah, that reading is already in average out last 30 days, 30, 30 minutes. Okay. And the same with the display on the monitor too? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? I've got one more thing I can say if you want about uh, a job we're doing next week and how we're going to use it, unless you want me to 
There was a it was actually a question saying, what is the ideal scenario of using the eco tracker? So maybe that's your story. Okay. So this job I did a couple months ago, um, the radon level was like, I don't remember, it was a couple months ago. Let's say it was 10. And she, the husband and wife were there. And the, the wife was like, well, I wonder what the radon level is upstairs. And I wonder what it is over there. It's like, ah. So I grabbed the eco trackers. And I ended up spending three hours there. So thanks a lot, Jamie. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but I scattered them around and then she would be, I'd be like, okay, this is 13 here and it's whatever, 13 in the laundry room. And then she's like, well, what about the bedroom upstairs? I'm like, oh, okay, let's put it on up there. But they had a, um, a well room that they didn't know they had. So inside the little mechanical room, which is not easy to get to. There's no pipe route to it. So we're gonna have to stitch to it if we need to do it. But there was like a, a piece of plywood screwed to the wall. I'm like what's behind that? And I go, I don't know. It's been here since we moved here 20 years ago or something. So I got a drill out and we took that off. And here it's a well room with a, just a clay dirt floor. And all of the block that were broke out for that doorway were all open, you know, the top of the little aren't sealed or anyway or anything so there's a clear pathway into the house so i put an eco tracker in there put a couple of screws back in it and we sat and watch it climb and climb and climb and climb and uh, i don't remember what it maxed out at like 25 or something like that um so the rest of the house was like the laundry room was 13 or something um so next week when we or monday when we start that job we'll put the eco trackers in there we're going to try just sealing that well room since there's no way, easy way to get pipe to it other than stitch. We're going to try to mitigate by just treating the laundry room area and see if that drops the radon levels. If it doesn't, when we come back on day two, then we're going to do the stitching and drop a suction point and depressurize that well room. Um, so that's how we're going to use it on that house. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good, good, good case study there. I think. <clears throat> I think that's a that's a perfect answer to that uh, to that question. I think. 